Hi and welcome back to part two of my video on editing techniques using Pinnacle Studio. My name is Stephen Power. I'm a professional photographer and video creator in Port McGee, County Kerry and owner of Skelly Green Photography Workshops. I do hope you'll subscribe for more videos on all things photography. And I'm going to start this second part of the tutorial by looking at some basic editing skills in Pinnacle Studio. You'll remember from last time that we organized the, the videos and the other media on the hard drive. And if you did miss that one, I've put a link to it at the top of the screen somewhere now. Here now we've got three basic types of media in the project bin that I talked about in part one. So I've got a, a still image. Um, I've got two video clips and I've got some music. And for now we're going to have a look particularly at editing the video clips both in what's called a source monitor and in the timeline. So you can see here on the right hand side of the screen we've got a, a viewing screen here and the word source is orange. If we click over to timeline that will go blank because there's actually nothing in the timeline which is this area at the bottom here of the screen um, were the various video and audio tracks will be uh, placed and edited. So there's nothing on there so we can't see anything in the monitor. But as soon as we click over back to source we can see a, an image which is the beginning of this video clip here that I have highlighted. If I move over to that one then the image will change to show what's at the beginning of this video. So I'm going to start with the second video here. It's always useful uh, to right click on certain parts of the program. For example on this clip gives us a lots of options if we we can preview it, which will start it playing in the source monitor. We can edit the caption. We can open it in corrections, show scenes, edit scenes, detect scenes. It's worth looking through what you can do with right click to make you more familiar with any piece of software. So don't overlook the power of the right click as it were. So back to previewing the clip in the source monitor we can just click hover over it and then click the little play icon that appears or right click or click this play icon over here now you can see that I get this message a render operation is pending this may or may not happen depending on whether your clips are already rendered if we just render in background then it should start playing. What I'm looking for here is the start or where I want this main, the video to start and to end, particularly this, this clip. Any fine editing I'll do in the timeline. To speed things along, if maybe if I've seen it before um, or I'm familiar with it, then if I click over the little red bar here, the red line, until it becomes a double headed arrow, I can then drag it along and it will move in jumps, if you like, until I get roughly to where I want it to be. And that looks about right. So I'll stop that, go back uh, away from where I want to start. Now I'll come over here and we'll see these two. Um, I don't know, they're like rectangles with a piece cut off at the bottom. Um, one is for mark in. So if we click that, the, 
little orange marker with the same shape will jump to where the timeline is now and the one to the right of it is mark out you can see they've both got shortcut letters so if I, I could move them by clicking I on the keyboard pressing I on the keyboard for mark in and pressing O on the keyboard for mark out so we've marked the in point if I play again we should move on and I'm going to just find the double headed arrow again and scrub across until I find where I want it to stop playing and this piece from this point to this point is the bit that will bit of the clip that will come onto the timeline when I move it on and the way to do that here is just to click this curved arrow on, underneath the source monitor and it appears in track two because that's the one I had highlighted earlier had I highlighted track one that's where it would have jumped to um, the reason I didn't is that it's often useful to leave a track above the main track if you like the main video track so you can put other things on there and they will appear over the video such as uh, titles or still images. I just want to show you something important about bringing in a second clip onto the timeline from the source monitor. So I've gone back into the source monitor now and I'm going to click the other clip that we haven't used yet. Be aware of where the timeline bar is on any other clips that you might have in the timeline because if we import from the source monitor by using the downward arrow it will bring the clip to just on the right hand side of this red time line bar so if we click now on that downward arrow you can see that it's actually dropped in the second clip just about two-thirds or so three-quarters of the length along the first clip because that's where the timeline bar was when we clicked send or drag clip to the timeline so I'm going to click control Z or Z if you like and undo that let's bring the timeline here and do the same thing again and now it drops it on the end if we were to hover over the clip left click and drag it you'll see that the timeline bar turns green and we can move that to any point on the other clip and then let go and that's where it will stop or we could leave a gap or we can move it up and put it onto the top or the bottom track so it will appear underneath the main clip we can do things like montage then of um, double exposure type things but that's fairly advanced so for now I'm just gonna try and bring it to the end of that clip join it in there it's left a gap so I'm gonna right click and close gap so now we've got the two clips joined up on the timeline so the next thing then is to edit the clips in the timeline again there's several ways to do this but I'm going to just move the timeline bar to the start of the video that I want I'll start with the house the I'm just dragging the timeline at this point there's other ways to do it I could move the um, left and right arrows on the keyboard for example just to move the 
timeline far along to be very precise in terms of the start. Then if I come along here under the source window and click this split clips icon or N on the keyboard and it puts in a split between the two clips. Now this is quite important, got to make sure that if I want to delete any of the clips it has to be the highlighted section with the orange marks around. So I'll, I'll move off this one because if I, if I did a delete now, um, I usually do it on the keyboard, hit delete. That will move and the gap closes automatically. But that's not the one I wanted to edit. So I'll do control Z again, bring that back. Now click onto this piece this shorter clip here, click delete, or I could use the bin icon here, as I call it, um, and then that will delete it, and it closed the gap and brought up the, the clip to the start of the timeline. Editing your video clips can be very complex and take a long time. And what I've wanted to show you in this video is that with the source monitor, I tend to find the main start point of the clip that I want to bring onto the timeline and the main end point of that clip, and then bring it onto the timeline. When it's in the timeline, this is where I tend to do the finer editing, if you like. In order to keep these videos to a manageable size, I'm going to leave it there for now. And in the next video, we'll look at slightly more advanced features, such as using transitions. And also, I'm going to look at some of the tools along the top of the timeline here on both sides. Those of you who were looking for an answer to the question uh, of why I couldn't find raw still image files in the previous video um, when I came to import them and they only showed when I turned the file to a JPEG. I'm sorry to say I still don't have the answer to that but I'm going to keep looking. It might be, if you're having a similar problem, then converting the still image file to a JPEG before importing might be the answer. For now, at least a, a workaround, as they say. Thank you very much for looking at this video. Please leave a comment in terms of what else you might like to see. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.